I read that uh, you got into Ithaca yeah. on a music scholarship. Yeah, right. I, was it a music? I'd say half a scholarship. Okay, but, but yeah, I, I mean, wanna, they, I don't want to brag. It was more like fifty percent. <laughs> but what they thought enough of your talent, like we're going to cover yeah. part of your education yeah. because of your music yes, ability. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and how long did you stay there? A long time. I was there about three weeks. Wow, that is a long. Oh time. yeah, so <laughs> it's three weeks yeah, longer than I've been to yeah. college. I'll, I'll give it to you that. <laughs> I mean, you know, so you got so, me about three. So, so it was about about three weeks in or so. I called. I called the house. You know. Call it. This is before cell phones. I use the uh, landline or whatever. Oh, yeah. Know? And so I say, hey, I got bad news. You know, I get my mom on the phone and I say, I got bad news. You know, she's like, oh, no, what is that? I said, well, you know, I, I, I think I want to quit school. You know, she said uh, something I didn't expect her to say. She goes, oh, well, college is just an experiment, which is far out from what wow. I was expecting. So after that few weeks of going to class and me breaking that news to her, she said, why don't you just hang out, spend the rest of the semester, just have a good time. Took a semester off, locked myself in my room when I got home, back upstate, listened to a bunch of albums, and would replicate mm -hmm. those artists, you know, just yeah. trying to recreate what they were doing, mm -hmm. trying to sing like them, yeah. trying same, to sing every same note. Same for me, I think we right? all did that, yeah, absolutely. So that's yeah. the lesson, and so that's the greatest education you can have, which is trying to mimic your heroes. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, once you copy their styles, you can therefore take that and create your own art. Exactly. But I also felt the drive to be successful because I, when I was about 19 or so, around that time, I went for a drive with my father. I say to my father, if you could change anything about your life, what would it be? And without hesitation, he goes, well, I never would have stopped playing music. Oh, wow. And it was at that moment, I thought, hmm, I don't want to be that old guy in the car, driving around, daydreaming about what he could have done. Mm -hmm. The best lesson was finding out what the person who cared about me the most regretted the most. I'm learning all this about my father, and I try to go back to another school, a music school, within the year. I go there for another semester and a half. I go to Berkeley Music in Boston. Yeah, the biggest music school in America. Yeah, it's a big one. That's the biggest one I know of. Yeah, it's a it's a big yeah. one. So, but to me, after about you know a semester in there, you can't be a slouch and get into that school nah. musically. You got to know what you're doing. See, supposedly, right? Well, <laughs> the true you got in. So what am I saying? Exactly. I got in there. Anybody can get in there. Okay. So, so I said to my parents one day. They come visit from New York, right? We're in Boston. They come visit, and I get this big, uh, I'm getting emotional, you know, about how I'm wasting my youth. These are my marketable years. I'm interested in, the, in getting in the music business. And the music business, in the music business, the window of opportunity is always closing. Oh, absolutely. Period. So I said to my parents, I said, listen, I need to quit school yet again because <laughs> Right now, I'm out, I'm out of the hustle. I need to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. I need to go to a town where people are gonna see that right. you're gigging, that you're playing. I need to make things happen. You could already I need see, to record. You could already see in your mind you standing in front of 20,000 people. Like that's where you wanted to be standing. Yes, yeah. and yeah. so we get out of the car, I'm very emotional, and my, my dad uh, hops out of the truck and he says to me, hey, you're my hero, right? Yeah. Stop me dead in my tracks. I bet. Dead in my tracks. And I'm all like emotional and you know, he says, I said, what did you say? He said, you're my hero. And I said, why would you say that to me? Mm -hmm. He said, because you have the guts to chase your dream at all costs. Mm -hmm. And I never did. Wow, so, man. Yeah. That's the, it's gotta be the greatest compliment yeah. A dad could ever give a son. Biggest or a compliment daughter. I ever had. Ever. You don't Biggest beat that one. Biggest I ever had. Sticks with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And my dad said, make me a recording of you singing, he'd say. Make me a recording of you singing. I said, all right. Make it, make it for me. I said, dad, I don't have a studio. And I said, <laughs> I don't get to make it on anything. Right. And I did. And he walked around Manhattan. With that my cassette. My old man. With that cassette. And he'd walk into anywhere. And he'd say, my son's the greatest singer you've ever heard. You need to hire him. 
Wow. Play you mean tape. like in venues and stuff? Like places you could go Restaurants, play? Restaurants, so venues, whatever. Like you need my boy in your place singing because he's the best there is. Listen to this. That's it. So he was he was, he was was your promoter. Yeah. Dude, what does that make you feel like as, yeah. as, as the son to watch that? I mean, you know how many kids don't ever get that from Nobody their parents? Nobody gets that. Nobody. No, I mean, I've never heard it, nope. a story like that. And he did that because he didn't get that to that level. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, when I was 15 years old, we went to a Billy Joel show, and uh, that was the Christmas present. The Christmas present was <laughs> nobody's getting presents, we're all going to see a concert. Okay. So my brother and my sister and I and my parents, we go to a place, it was called the Knickerbocker Arena, it's in Albany, New York. At that time, I had it in my head that I wanted to, I wanted to be an eye doctor, I wanted to be an ophthalmologist, you know, I wanted to make people see, right? Like I wanted to make the blind see. Mm -hmm. That was like, I wanted to do something important. Yeah. But yep. when I went to that concert yep. and I saw the joy that it provided people, and I saw what it did to people, oh, yeah. it dawned on me. I said to myself, wow, music is medicine. Music is medicine. Look at these I people, said, how they're reacting right now. Look what it right does now. for them. We all got in the car after the show. I said out loud in the car, I think I know what I want to do now. And uh, my father says, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do that. I want to. I, I want to do what Billy Joel does. That's <laughs> yeah. what I want to do. Yes. And he said, "Looks like fun, doesn't it?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Then that's what you'll do." He did that on purpose. Twenty-five years later. Yeah. Phone rings. My dad's on the phone. Hey, Billy wants you to do a show. I said, "Billy who?" He said, "Billy Joel." I said, "Billy Joel." <laughs> he goes, "Yeah." He wants you to open for him. I said, "Billy Joel wants me to open for him." He says, "Yeah." Billy Joel wants you to open for him. And okay. That was the full. And circle. Then, here we go. Full circle moment. We got to the show. I'm backstage and his guitar player came up to me, Tommy Burns. He said, we're all outside having a smoke. So I follow him outside and all the band and crew all stand around a semicircle. Yeah. And I walk back there and Tommy goes, hey, Billy, Billy, Gavin's here, Gavin's here. And he's like, ah, Gavin, hey, man. Hey, hey man, thanks for coming, you know? You're right. I was like, thanks for coming. I said, thanks for coming. You're thanks for coming. About... You're my <laughs> idol. I mean, right? So I said, you're my idol, man. And I said, listen, I don't know who else you have planned to do these shows. You may have someone else in mind, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have anyone else in mind for this position, I'm gonna tell you candidly right now, go <laughs> f that guy. <laughs> So, I mean, well, I mean, listen. Yeah, and you know what? They all burst your, out. You got to work on your confidence, honestly. Yeah, yeah. This is, <laughs> yeah. You can't be such a lightweight and get anywhere, Gavin. It's just not yeah. going to happen for you, man. Yeah. So, he probably loved that answer. No, they all burst They're out laughing. Like, listen they to burst this kid. out laughing. He right. said, You can do more shows. I said, I'll do every show. All the shows. I said, I will cancel shows to do this show. Of course. That's how big this is to me. Yeah.